about this for quite a while. In fact, I've wanted to talk with her for uh, many years, and uh, especially since she uh, just recently released a, a debut CD called All My Funky Friends. And every week I come to the studio and I play a track off of this record without fail because it's just a, a CD which uh, never fails to bring out uh, the goosebumps on the arm and gets people dancing or break it down real slow. She is an original bride of Funkenstein and uh, she's just worked and collaborated with Sly Stone, the uh, Parliament Funkadelic Organization, George Clinton, Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart, Bernie Warrell, Coolio and Ice Cube. And we'll talk more about all those great things that she's done throughout these years but right now without further delay i'm going to welcome to the upper room with joe kelly dawn silva how you doing joe kelly and uh finally nice to have you on the program here i know we talked for uh, many months and a lot of people out there are just looking forward to having hearing from you today it's my pleasure to be here today it's my pleasure so uh dawn this cd all my funky friends uh it's long overdue i'm sure for you but uh what was uh in, in your mind to get uh, these tracks done and, and get them out to the people? Well, I've been listening to the radio off and on for years, and I just felt there was just a big void for funk music. And it, it, mostly it was almost a dream, you know, the same dream that I had when I first started in the business, to, to have the funk back in mainstream. And I tried to figure out the best way to do it. And, uh, of course... Like so many artists, we've gone to the major labels and was told that funk was not marketable. Uh, there was no format, no genre for funk any longer. And for the veteran artists, we just couldn't get the deals. So along comes the Internet, which uh, was around, a way for me to go around the gatekeepers. And we uh, decided to go ahead and, and record a CD and, and drop it ourselves. And that's what I did. And uh, I'm definitely uh, partners with you in that and getting, uh, you know, I think funk should never have to bend to anybody else. It just, I think we stay strong and, you know, CDs like yourself and a lot of your friends that are getting the word out. I think it's going to be all right. Well, as George Clinton always used to say, funk is his own reward. And I believe I'm reaping the benefits from this CD and it's doing, it's blowing me away. It's doing uh, much better than I even anticipated doing. Especially over in Europe, it's doing really well. Now, you're working with a uh, special guy on that really uh, talented producer. Yes. De Levance, right? Yes. I hope I pronounced his name right. De Levance, yes. De Levance, right? Yes. H how did you uh, come in contact with him? I met De Levance about 10 years ago. Um, a dear friend of mine, her name is Jackie Simile, and she's also on my CD, called me when Angela Wimbush was looking for background singers to go on tour for her first uh, solo CD. And I went to the audition, and I didn't get the gig, but I did meet De Levant, and he uh, was a fan, and he told me that he had gone to the Los Angeles Coliseum and saw the P-Funk Funk Festival back in the day. That's when it was Bootsy, Collins, <clears throat> excuse me, the Brides of Funkenstein, Parlette, Barquet's Cameo, uh, Mother's Finest, uh, the world's greatest funk festival. He was there, and I think he was all of about 15 years old. And he was telling me that he had, from that moment on, he was sprung. He started writing songs and tracks, and he had them for years. But he never had an artist to put those particular songs on. So he, we met up, and, um, and that was 10 years ago, and he played the songs for me. And, of course, at that time, I believe I was on the road. Oh, 10 years ago, I was on the road with the Gap Band. So I never followed up on it. And a few years ago, I ran into him again. And he says, I still got those songs. I still got the funk. And so I said, you know what? Why don't we hook up? So we did. And I went to his studio in Los Angeles and we started recording about a year ago. We ended up finishing in Sacramento at my studio and uh, we finished August of last year. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been, been pretty productive for me. Now, with a young, younger cat like uh, De La Vance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how about his uh, production style compare it as opposed to when you were working with uh, Parliament Funkadelic and all, all the many, many folks in the studio? Well, the songs that he, he had for me were so much on the funk until I got excited and it had been a long time since I've heard tracks that were had the same flavor of the old school sounds, but yet 
It also had the flavors of the new school beats. And um, he's De Levance's uh, genius as far as coming up with the sounds. And he collaborated and put those two flavors, those two elements of new school and old school together. And with me writing the lyrics and the melodies and help from some of my funky friends like Jeanette Washington and uh, songwriters, um, Sue Ann Carwell. We um, came up with some monster, monster uh, hooks and melodies, and we, we collaborated and put it all together, but the flavor was basically from the roots of P-Funk, and it's been a long time since I've heard any songs like that. Yeah, I often talk to, you know, members of the, the P-Funk organization, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing that the, the music is timeless. You know, you listen to a record like that, and you can't say, well, that was the 60s or exactly. the 90s. Exactly, it's ageless. It's ageless, and, and, and a CD like yourself is just in that tradition, and do you know when you're recording songs like that, that this is going to be in that vein, that's going to be timeless, or, or how do you get it to be that way? Uh, well, we know that we needed to have the, I had to satisfy the funk market, the funk fans, I had to satisfy their desire to have the music back on and, and actually satisfy my own. I have to like it first. In fact, I have to love it first before I expect anybody else to like it or love it. And it's just that um, we needed to stay on that vein of, of the P-Funk music from the flavors from songs like uh, Tear the Roof Off, uh, Flashlight Knee Deep, um, mm, what is it, Aqua Boogie, and on and on and on. There's a list. We needed to find out, find a way to have that flavoring without actually going and, and doing remakes of the same songs that were released at some point at some time. We, need to add, we wanted to do new funk but mm -hmm. yet keep it old as well. Right. Well, Dawn Silver has a great CD out, and we're, we're going to uh, be delving into a, a cut right now. It's called All My Funky Friends, and we should remind people that all the latest Dawn Silver information is at www.dawnsilva.com, mm -hmm. and uh, you can go there and find out how to order the CD. It's all over the place now, right? Yes, you can also get it at CD Now, and Amazon.com is doing very well for mm -hmm. me as well, too. Mugbone.com, which is uh, WFNK.com, DJ Raz. And DJ Raz is, uh, it was one of the first funk soldiers to contact me six, seven months ago when I, before the CD was even released and uh, talked about a website and hooking up with him. And of hit. course, the One Nation board, mm -hmm. which is George's personal page, and they gave me a great deal of love over there. So, uh, I mean, I just basically got hip to the whole cyberspace and Internet. I didn't even know how to turn a computer on six months ago. <laughs> yeah, now it's uh, to your advantage, right? Yeah, yeah most definitely. definitely, most yeah. definitely. And we should mention that uh, DJ Raz's uh, website, WFNK.com, because it, it's really cool that uh, he's along the veins here in the upper room um, that, you know, plays independent. He, you know, he's got different. He's got the P-Funk station, then he's got alternative uh, black artists, and, and it's real nice that that music is finally getting its just due. Yes, and also to mention, I can't forget uh, Daryl Moon, who has the thefunkstore.com as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, Daryl Moon, I met Daryl Moon, it has to be 20 years ago in Buffalo, New York, when his father used to have a, his own record store, a record, uh, retail store in Buffalo, and he used to sell a lot of the P-Funk records back in the day. And he also contacted me, and, and that site is doing well for me as well. So how about those P-Funk records? You got them all? You, you... I have most of them, yeah. all of them. I have all of the vinyl. I still yeah. have those. Uh, I started buying uh, them on CDs recently, and of course a lot of fans that I've met over the last six months are sending me a lot of funk songs as well, a lot of new stuff, compilations that I never knew was, were, were out on the market. Brides of Funkenstein Live, I never knew that was on Amazon.com as well, and that's selling it. Brides Live. Of course, Atlantic Records never reissued any Brides of Funkenstein's uh, the first two albums on CD. But there's a lot of what, what I call the underground funk market who are still selling those records. Right. Definitely a good investment, <laughs> so hold on to those. Okay. Yeah. I most well, definitely will. Now, we're going to get into the kickoff track right now from your All My Funky Friends. Okay. And, uh, you know... How, how'd you get that French? I know there's a little story behind this. Uh, Actually, this track. that came. That's Canadian French. I used to work in Canada for all my Canadian friends who are listening today. Um, 
I went over to Toronto to do the American, I mean, excuse me, to do the Canadian Film Festival. And it was just supposed to be one weekend, and it turned into 13 months. So uh, while I was there, I was working with some funk producers, a guy named Oren Isaacs, who's in Toronto, and we came up with some tracks. And he spoke fluent French. And he came up with that uh, title, Excusez-moi, Madame, est-ce que tu la musique? Which means, excuse me, Mrs. Mister, do you love this groove? And I decided to, that if I ever did release a song, I wanted to put that little that little saying inside one, uh, of that one track. All right. Well, we're going to play that track as long as it's on the one. And okay. this is the kickoff track. And we've got an extended uh, in-depth interview with Dawn. So we're really happy to have her here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. We'll find out about her future touring plans. I know she's putting a band together. Also, her friends over in Europe. She's uh, done a lot of things over there, a lot of support. And also her Internet friends who are getting the word out. Right now, this is Dawn Silva, as long as it's on the one. Okay. That's surefire dance smash there. That is Dawn Silva from uh, All My Funky Friends, as long as it's on the one. Joe Kelly in the upper room here with you on this Monday afternoon. And uh, Dawn, you've been, uh, you were telling me uh, they're creating some nice uh, remixes to that one for the club DJs, right? Yes, they are. You know, um, Joe, that song, is, that track has got to be about 10 years old. That's one of the first tracks that DeLavance played for me. Oh, gosh, 90, 92, I believe, 91, 91. Mm -hmm. He played that song for me 10 years ago. He kept I had it. no, it's just no vocals, no concept, just just the music. And it sounds just as good as now as it did 10 years ago. Yeah, just just saving it for you, right? Yeah, we have remixes for that song as well as a few others that are going to go on vinyl. And in about two weeks, I should have the vinyl in my hand. Mm-hmm. And, the uh, you know, we talked about um, your support over in Europe. You've uh, the fans have been definitely uh, steady supporters of you, and, and you just came back from a journey over there to do a, a lot of things over there. Press wise, yes, I right? did. I went over right before Christmas, and I stayed about close to three weeks. They're supporting me big time. Uh, it's been a long time since I felt that much love behind uh, funk music, and uh, maybe I did about at least twenty. Uh, interviews from different magazines, even techno and hip hop. Uh, I went to a radio station called France Inter, and they've got over a hundred radio stations in this one building that's like five stories high and takes up maybe a couple, maybe a block. And I went there every day for uh, at least two weeks into a different radio station, and where the song is actually being played all the way over in Sierra Leone in the Ivory Coast in Africa. And there's a song called Close to You that's on my record that's in the top 40s in Africa. So, yes, uh, I'm, I'm blown away over here from the um, support I'm getting. And now it's starting to be worldwide, so I'm really excited about it. Now, living over there, do you, you have a place... Uh one of your, I don't want to exclude everybody. Any any place you, you wouldn't mind setting up shop up there? At least a second home? Amsterdam. <laughs> Amsterdam, yeah? Yeah. Well, Holland what, is real funky. What, what do you like about that place? Holland is very funky. Oh, okay. That's like a, the funk to the headquarters. You, could, you have like soldiers like Marcel Visser who, who gives the funk to the max concerts. I think he gives four or five of those shows a year. And I had the pleasure to go and see Candy Dolfer. Right before Christmas. Oh, and she's great. She's definitely giving the funk up. W was her father there? I'm sorry? Was her father there? Was her father there? Yeah. I don't know, but I know it was packed. It was sold out. Uh-huh. And she's absolutely incredible. Yes. And she... I, I really love watching her, and, and I had a really good time now, in see, Amsterdam. See, that's a future collaboration. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that's right, on, on the, on the follow-up CD. But that would be great. Now... We talked in the in the beginning, and we're going to go back to uh, those high school days. You grew up in uh, Sacramento, California, right? Yes. Now, now, uh, you remember the first record you bought? The very first record that I ever bought? Uh-huh. It probably had to be... ...wet, and you had a... Uh, Papa's got a brand new bag, and licking stick... Yeah, James Brown was the the hero in our in my household when we were growing up. Now, how about how about the first uh, live show you went to concert? The first live show I ever went to, I went to see Sly and the Family Stone. Okay, it was out in uh, Northern California. At the California. Memorial Auditorium, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Uh huh. What what was uh what took you by Sly and the Family Stone back then? They blew me away. Right. 
not only just the music, the energy, um, the costumes. I, I used and my my phrase of their costumes like were splashing to a beat of their own. Uh -huh. Fly, they had so much energy, and it was not only just um, it was visual. I, I, oh, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I was when I saw a fly and the family stone for the first time. They blew me away, left an everlasting print on my heart as far as as funk, and they were. To me, that's the closest I knew about what funk music was when I saw Sly and the Family Stone. Now, what was it uh, that got you into the fold with Sly and the Family Stone, working with them? Um, right after seeing Sly and the Family Stone, my sisters and a cousin, and we put a little group together, and not that we were going anywhere. We used to rehearse in my mother's garage every day, and we had a little local band, and we just thought we were just doing it right. Uh -huh. And, um... Cynthia Robinson used to have family that lived on the same street as my mom, and I think she used to, used to listen to us to to the to us singing and rehearsing. And she just came and kind of knocked on the door and came in and said, "Hi, uh, you guys really sound good." And Sly's looking for background singers for a new CD, or excuse me, it's not CD, a new record that he's getting ready to record, and he needs some singers. And if you're interested, and she gave me her phone number. So that's how all that happened. And you worked that's with... That's how I got hooked up with Sly Stone. Yeah, you work with some great people. Cynthia, Jerry Martini, Larry Graham. Actually, I never got a chance to work with Jerry Martini oh, and okay. Pat and Larry Graham. And when I got to Sly Stone, Sly Stone was like re-doing his entire music style all over again. You know, the band had moved on and he was he was doing a whole nother, um, a whole nother thing. It wasn't the official, authentic find the family stone okay this was a whole new group he put together and i was part of that group you ever make it out to connecticut for any of the shows with him recently no 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 i mean uh 80s wise or way oh, back yeah. before that yeah. yeah yeah connecticut was funk headquarters yeah back in the day yes. yeah yeah i haven't been to connecticut in, in in a long time not to perform right See, that's yeah. what, that's what we got to work doing right now, getting the funk back here, so we can. Boy, you tell we, it. You know? We can bring your uh, your your real nice uh, band, which uh, we'll talk in in a little while about. Okay. But uh, you know, after Sly and the Family Stone, you know, you met up with uh, George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic History. Wow, you you worked with them about seven years or so, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was one of the um, tours that Sly Stone had scheduled with his new band, was to work with Boosie Boosie's Rubber Band. And Parliament Funkadelic, and we were the guest. And we came in on the guest act spot, and we were sandwiched in between these two. And of course, since Sly didn't have his monster players behind him with Larry Graham and Pat and Jerry and his, his brother Freddie, uh, I don't think that Sly could stand under the pressure from what he was accustomed to. You have to have a monster band in order to perform between those two groups, you know? Mm hmm. So the tour didn't last as long. It was supposed to be a 90-day tour. In, actual, in actuality, I think it lasted about three weeks. And then Sly suddenly decided he was going to leave the tour. And then George approached Lynn Mabry and myself and asked us to do sessions. And that's how I got with George. You know? Well, we, we know all the history of uh, working in the studio with Parliament Funkadelic, all, all different projects going on at one time. Um, right. You have any... Uh, favorite projects that, that stuck out that, that you put your vocals down to? My favorite? Well, uh, any, some of your favorites. You don't oh, have to narrow wow, it down. Oh, wow, that's hard but, to narrow yeah. down, because basically all of them were, every. I don't think I can think of one session that I, we didn't have a great time, but if I have to narrow it down to to one, I'd have to say Eddie Hazel. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Hazel did his first album, and that was called Games, Dames, and Guitar Things. Yeah. And you, that was and you, great. You do Eddie it. was such a, an incredible talent. And uh, you definitely give him a lot of respect on, on your uh, All My Funky Friends. Oh, yeah. With yeah. Eddie Hazel? Yeah, I love Eddie Hazel. Yeah. I miss him. I miss him deeply, yes. And uh, you moved on to uh, The Brides of Funkenstein with uh, your good friend Lynn Mabry. Yes. And uh, she's still out uh, in California, I believe Northern California. Yes. And uh, The Brides of Funkenstein. You even, you even did a little thing uh, on your own record with some of their stuff, right? I'm sorry, a, repeat yourself a, again? A, a little flavor of uh, Brides on this record, too. A little flavor. I, yeah. I was trying to get close to the... If the Brides were still together in this day and age, what would, what would we do? How would we 
vocalize this particular part or what will we say what will we, what will we add you know to this to this particular composition and that's that's how i came up with a lot of the vocals that we did do mm -hmm. i was thinking that maybe if the brides were there this is the type of music that we would be doing now and the close i can get to getting that flavor is jeanette washington who was also from our sister group parlette original member from parlette also original member of parliament funkadelic and she flew in from atlanta uh -huh. and added her vocal skills to uh quite a few songs you gotta love that cookie jar, right? That's one of my favorite tracks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that and uh, oh, Wolf Tickets. Is well, my yeah. favorite from Parlette. Yeah. yeah, Pleasure Principle. Pleasure and... Principle is a monster. Yeah. Well, we're gonna uh, stick back to uh, all my funky friends and get into uh, a song which you, you said is really hot over in uh, in Europe, right? It's called Close to You. Yes. And um, we should remind people out there listening. Uh, there's no excuse not to uh, have this in your collection. You can go to Amazon.com, CD Baby, or CD Now, right? CD Now, yes. CD Now.com, Mugbone.com, and uh, lots of support out there. You can also get it from uh, DawnSilva.com as well. And you can get all that information and uh, send Dawn a nice email. She'll get back to you. That would sure. be nice. <laughs> in, in between uh, crossing uh, all the way across the world. You know, how, how many emails did you have waiting for you? A lot? How many? When yeah. I got back from yeah, France? Yeah, when you got back, yeah. I had about 200. Uh-huh. And now that the CD is selling very well over in Paris, I'm getting a lot of mail from, from over there and uh, letters. They're writing me letters. And the Virgin Mega Store all across uh, Europe is, is selling the CD very well. And there is a email address on the CD. So I've, I get mail all the time from fans, especially in France and in, in Holland. And we got to get the, the folks representing here in the States. And I know we've been playing it for a long time and lots of other people around here, but they'll come around and you'll probably be on to, on to something else. But still, um, it's good to see that funk is going strong once again. And uh, this is Dawn Silva. And you're going to stick around for a little more, right? Oh, yeah, I'll be right here. All right. Don Silva is my special guest here, Joe Kelly in the upper room. This is called Close to You. Okay, we have a quarter to five right here on the East Coast. And uh, welcome to everybody listening out there on WVUF.com and also here in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, Don Silva is my special guest. And thanks for, uh, for the extended visit. Thanks for asking me to be here. <laughs> you know, you talked uh, a little before about... Um, you have to have a monster band behind you, and you work with so many uh, great people throughout these years. Oh, uh, yeah. We're looking forward to uh, a Dawn Silva band hitting the road, and uh, I don't know if you can mention uh, some things that are happening with, with your band. What, what are you going to, uh, who are you going to be taking out on the road with you? Right now, I put out all the calls. I went to the NOM convention in Los Angeles, and we recruited uh, quite a few musicians. Um, some of the names you might recognize are the first calls were out to Blackbird, McKnight, who also used to be with the Brides back in the day, uh, Andre Fox, who played guitar with T-Funk All-Stars, um, possibly Greg Thomas for, on horns. Of course, I'm taking Cynthia Robinson mm -hmm. on trumpet. Uh, Jeanette Washington will be joining me and some newcomers as well some newcomers. I've got a keyboard player that plays with Eric Benet, and this, they call him DC. He's coming out. Um, maybe some players also from the time. I'm not sure that uh, we're in the process of putting that together, too. Oh, they're, they're good and we're also putting some dates together, and all this is just um, we're talking about it. and We're putting it together now, but it looks like we might be doing some dates with Morris Day and the time in August in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that as well. There's another group that might come out with us, too, and that's uh, Mint Condition. Oh, yeah, from Minneapolis. Yeah, those yeah. guys are, like, unreal. So we're trying to put those dates together now, maybe even Cameo. We have talked to their camp as well. So we're trying to put a little funk tour together here. Dawn, you got a spot for me on that tour? <laughs> oh, I wish, you could, I wish yeah. everyone could come, of wow. course. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be around that for a whole Most tour. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a whole another extension of the funk, so I'm getting really excited about it. I've... I've heard um, a couple of rehearsals for the live show, and it's like blowing me away even more so because we stepped it up a couple of notches. So it's like you take the same songs that I have on the CD, and then you, you get all these monster keyboard, monster musicians playing. 
it's um it's going to be off the hook now most definitely now what does it take to um to put out such a great because you know when i was growing up i'd say my my real heyday as a, a teenager was like the early 80s and you know r&b funk bands were just flourishing back then but what does it take to put on a great show like that to keep the energy and uh just keep the funk flowing well first you have to have substantial product first in order to do that and i i think that we have that um then the love of the funk and it's not so much that it's just a lot of of um complicated funk riffs and it's just having it's a feel it's just a feel of the funk and mm -hmm. the flavor and you need to get musicians who actually where well, you don't have to teach them how to play the funk they know the funk they can feel it from their spirit from the heart and um that's what we did you know okay Here, here's the cliche question okay uh-huh what what is your definition of funk Ooh, <laughs> my definition of the funk uh, you know, it's hard to put the funk into words, but if I had, I have to, I would say that, uh, it's a culture, like a black ball opera, mm -hmm. and it blends humor and fantasy, a little bit of Jimi Hendrix radical acid rock, uh, let's say James Brown's funky bass bottoms, and, uh, borrowing Sly Stone's gospel pop blues to create the element I believe we come to know as the funk. I think that's my interpretation of what the funk is. Okay, we're going to send it off to Webster's and put it right in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Creation of Dawn Silva. You know, we're going to listen right now. So, probably something you haven't heard in a while. This is uh, The Brides of Funkenstein Live, a uh, track called Ride On. Uh-oh. Yeah? Haven't heard that in a long time. And uh, we're going to let people listen to it now. We'll come back and uh, talk for a little more with Dawn and hear a couple tracks going out. And uh, all my funky friends, go to dawnsilva.com, and they'll uh, direct you to all ways to get this CD. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you on tour. I'm going to see the time March 2nd, so I'll have to, I'll have to uh, get, them, get them all psyched if things happen well, like that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, keep it in their ear, you know? I, I definitely will. Okay. Okay, we're going okay. to, we're going to be uh, listening right now to The Brides of Funkenstein live right here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. <laughs> All right, that is the Brides of Funkenstein, which uh, the original Bride of Funkenstein is my special guest right now, Dawn Silva. Wow, and, uh, Joe, that's a funky cut there. Yeah, you got you got to love that. And yeah, you got to uh, send me that. I haven't yeah. heard that in years. I, I was feeling a little uh, Larry Graham and Sly Stone groove on that one, towards the end. I feel that too. Yeah, we have yeah. some incredible musicians too. I went Jeff Bunn, we call him Cherokee, Blackbird McKnight. I believe we had Juni Morrison on there, and whoa, God. Um, that was a, maybe Bernie might have been in there a little bit too. We had yeah. we had some incredible Dennis Chambers on the drums too. I, right, keeps it I right in the pocket. Yeah. Amazing, amazing tour, amazing tour. Yeah, Ber Bernie Worrell actually was. Uh, he brought his keyboards in here, October '99 and played. He's he's a real great guy. You still keep in contact, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I, I, I was working with Bernie um, last year. I went out with Bernie for about mm, close to six months, off and on for dates mm -hmm. with Bernie and the Woo Warriors. We also did the uh, Woodstock '99. That was when George George had his birthday party at Woodstock. Yeah, that that was a party to speak of. Yeah, we had a good time. How'd you like playing out there? Real nice. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a good time. Yeah, right. Most definitely, it looked like millions and just a sea of frantic funk fans. It was right. great. How many people? Great. I mean. The stage gets kind of cluttered at times, but still, you got you know all the players there giving their piece on there. Well, Woodstock ha is the kind of stage that George Clinton needs to have because I think there had to be at least fifty people on stage. Uh huh. And for for a change, we all had our own little space. We all had room, you know, on stage, so we weren't all crammed in together. So it was great. Now, for a concert like that, when you have between thirty and fifty musicians just coming on. How, how does it go on? One guy's going to replace another guy on, on percussion and drums and, you know. It's just a feel. You uh -huh. know, you just kind of go with the flow, right. you know. You know, where, where maybe somebody might leave the percussions and any one of those musicians, any one of them can, can go and play any instrument. Right. Very, very versatile. So it was never anything that was formatted or planned, you know, or programmed. It was just, we went with the flow. And good to see uh, Bootsy and his brother out there again on stage. It was great to see Catfish. I hadn't seen Catfish in years. Yeah. And yeah. I, I heard Bernie's uh, 
on work on a new uh, upcoming release, right? Yes, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. I hear Boosie's got a new record coming out as well. Right. And I say record because, I don't know, like, it's hard for me to say CDs because to me CDs now seem so... Uh, it's lacking that, that, that feel for some reason. I just can't feel a lot of the stuff that's out now. They have some great songs. Now, see, I say CDs because, I mean albums, because albums captured the essence of the right. heart of the music. And, and plus with an album... We'd be able to see the full-length uh, picture of you on this, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, on a CD, you gotta you gotta get the trifold out. Right. Yeah. And Definitely. Now, um, there's some uh, videos that uh, people are, are talking to you about putting out for this record. Um, any uh, songs in mind for that one? Right now, the record company in Europe is having problems trying to pick a single. Right. Um, I went to, well, maybe a hundred different radio stations in France, and each one of them picked maybe two or three different songs. And as I was telling, telling you earlier, that's the advantage, or maybe even the disadvantage of having a CD that's been released on the Internet, because there's no set song, there's not a single that's been released. It's up to the fans, actually, to pick their favorite songs. So over in France, even the record company is... They're having a problem between picking uh, between four different singles. They don't. They're not sure which one. So they're asking me, and I, I thought that there's a song called "Shake It Down" that is on the CD, and it's got that new school, old school flavor. And I think that that would be a good song to put out for the single. And I believe that might be the one. Either that or "Red Light District." Mm -hmm. And "Red Light District" was actually written about the famous "Red Light District" in Amsterdam, Holland. Right. And that one's doing well in Holland as well. So. It's a it's a cross between a choice between shake it down or red light district. You know, I think uh, we're gonna uh, let the the folks out there listen to one of those tracks right now. I got it queued up, red light district. Uh huh. And uh, we'll come back and talk a little more, and then go out with uh, maybe shake it down. Okay. But, uh, we want to remind folks that they're in tune to WVOF eighty eight point five in Fairfield. It's straight up five o'clock here on the East Coast. If you're listening across the world on WVOF dot com. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'm sure you're delighted with uh, the interview with Dawn Silva. All my funky friends, and this one's real nice. Light District from all my funky friends, Dawn Silva, keeping it true to the funk. And she was there uh, at the beginning, still going strong with her great uh, debut solo CD. This, uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, solo CDs coming out, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. We're working on another one now. I'm actually working on a gospel funk record for Jeanette Washington. Hers is next. And Jeanette, of course, worked with Slave, right? Jeanette worked with Parlette. Parlette, okay. Parlette. And uh, she's going to be in the band, you said? Yes. Yeah? She'll be singing right along with me. So you got to have your, your your good friends up there, up front. All my funky friends. All your funky friends. All my funky friends. Now, we talked off air, you know, we were talking about Val Young and, and uh, Red Light District, how it came about. Kind of a funny story, right? It's a funny story. Um, we were with the Gap Band over in Amsterdam, and it was 4 o'clock in the morning, and we were hungry. And we asked the concierge for, to, to steer us to a place to get something to eat, and we ended up in the Red Light District. Of course, very young, very naive. We didn't know where we were or why or how, but we were hungry. And uh, we end up walking down the middle of the street, and we start coming up with a melody for Red Light District. And you're talking, this is 1980. 586 around there and that melody stuck in my head to this day so i went back to val young and said you know let's put this on this record and so she said cool so we wrote the lyrics and we came up with that song and val young uh, got her her start solo wise with rick james who's actually val young got her start with the brides of funkenstein oh wow when she was all of what 15 years old she uh came auditioned for us but I don't think her mom would let her go out with us. She was too young, but she auditioned for The Brides of Uncastine yeah. years ago. Then she hooked up with uh, Rick James. She hooked up with Rick and, James. Uh, good and friend Rick of yours, right? Yeah, he produced a couple of CDs or records uh -huh. for her, and they were very well. And he's doing, much, very well. He's doing much better these days. Rick yeah. James, I just talked to Rick James, yes. Yep. He called to, to congratulate me for the CD and said he loved it, and uh, he's doing wonderful. He's, he's recording He's up and about. He's doing good. Very good. So you get 
uh, Cameo, The Time, Rick James, and yourself. Uh, you get hooked up with some of those folks. That's going to that's be real nice, hopefully touring the States. Yeah, we're all in the same loop, and, and hopefully we can do some dates in the States. That would be really nice. That would be nice. Being that there, I do have product over in Europe and it's and I don't have the product is not as strong in the states as it is in Europe. We'll probably start in Europe first, right. and the band and we can kind of slip through the back yeah. door back here in the United States and do some dates here. Yeah, come on, U.S. You got to get with with uh, the people who are already uh, digging the funk with Don Silva, and um, you know when you come eastward, we, we'd love to have you in the studio. By actually, by, probably by the time. Um, your tour and uh, we, we are moving into new studios in the latter part of the summer which is going to be really fantastic oh that would be nice we would love to come to Connecticut too yeah. as well I hear Connecticut is funk headquarters yeah. as well we're, we're only uh, one hour away from New York um, so from Newark? Uh, New, New York City Manhattan. New York yeah, New yeah York. so you know it's the tri-state area and uh, people you know it's a, it's a nice scene out here well how far are you from Plainfield, New Jersey? Plainfield, New Jersey oh kind of like uh an hour, 15, okay, 20 so minutes, yeah. You're close, you're close. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I wonder where that barbershop George was doing down there is still standing. I want to see that barbershop. One of these days yeah. I want to go see that barbershop. <laughs> Bernie said he was pretty good with the hair. George? Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, George used to can whip up some hairs, you know. Yeah. Some hairstyles. Yeah, so it must be nice out there. You know, some of the folks still staying there. Uh, you know, Bernie's still out there. Relaxing Bernie's still out there. there. Yeah? Yes, he is. Now, um, when when you're not uh, listening to your own stuff and working on your own projects, um, who who do you listen to in your spare time? Oh, mostly I listen to the funk. If it's not funk, then I uh, I'm <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to listen to it. I just got Andre Fox's new uh, CD called The Fox Files. Right. I just bought uh, Jill Scott. Oh yeah. I just got her CD, which is great. Um, Charlie Wilson from the Gap Band's got a new CD out that I've been listening to. And you worked on a lot of Gap Band projects, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, I also just bought recently an uh, artist named Rashad P- Patterson. He's out of New Jersey, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. This guy is incredible. So I really don't have time to really listen to the radio anymore. I don't watch television. What I do mostly is just we're always either in the studio or... Now that I have my own business uh, promoting this record, so the, it's a luxury to, to sit down and actually listen to a lot of different stuff. I don't have the time anymore, but right. So that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, that's a good thing. It's and, a good thing. And uh, we should before before we head out with another track, uh, mention a few of your funky friends out there who've been uh, really uh, crucial to getting the word out. Um, you know, Mia, of course, right? Mia Figueroa. Mia Figueroa. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's my auntie, by the way. What's that? She's my aunt. Okay. Yes. So uh, she's real instrumental in uh, getting publicity out there. And, uh, oh, yeah. She's great. She I, used to work for a record company um, back, way back in the day. Uh-huh. So, yeah, she's, she's, she's very good. Now, also, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Blaze, right? Blaze Schmitter, right. Wonder B. Uh-huh, Wonder B. Wonder B. And Pat, Wonder B is the reason why I have a record deal in, uh, in France. Right. He's going to help me hook that up, yes. And that's one thing about funk fans. They know their history. They know what's up because you can go to them just, you know, I could probably think tonight at an obscure question about the rides of Funkenstein and post it online, and these guys are really helpful. And they Yeah, know. actually the funk fans, especially the new ones, they know more about the history of funk than I do. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot from the fans over the years, quite a bit about the funk, you know. Because they're still pretty much in tune. Right. Now, um, how, how are you going to be as a band leader yourself? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh-huh. We shall see. I think I'm going to even let Blackbird or, or D. Levance or one of those guys do that, you know? Right. They just need to tell me what time what time is show time uh-huh. and, and uh, what time do I hit. That's uh-huh. about it for me as far as that. You know, I don't know. This is, this is a whole new territory for me. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you're going to... The work ethic growing up uh, with all those great people uh, it's going to just carry on into your own band. I'm, I'm definitely sure about that. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, do you have any memorable rooms around the United States uh, that you really want to hit around this tour? Any, any? Probably Chocolate City, which would be D.C. Yeah, that's right, D.C. And uh, Philadelphia. Um, right now, I, I uh, Philadelphia, uh, um, 
uh, Connecticut, of course, and uh, D.C. are well, buying a lot of CDs from the Internet. So the, I see the funk is very strong in those areas. Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Connecticut, D.C., New York. Yeah, I would definitely like to go and do some tours over in those areas. Yeah, and we'll definitely take care of you and continue our support. Um, I want to thank you, Dawn. This this has been a real honor for me because uh, I was saying before, even I, I rang you up that uh, you know I come to this is what I love radio the most. But when I come to the studio, when I know a guest like yourself who I wanted to talk to, it's just you get here early. You know, you're really excited, and uh, I know people out there listen feel the same way. So thank you so much. No, thank you, thank you so much for calling me. This is the first time I did an interview like this, and I, and I had a little, few little butterflies here, and hope I didn't babble too much. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you. This is de indeed an honor for me, and I'm so happy that there are so many funk fans out here who still love the music, including you, Joe Kelly. Thank yeah. you. And um, I should uh, remind people out there that. Uh, We'll be letting them know we're going to rerun it on a, another broadcast at live365.com, and you can type in the upper room at the search, and you can hear it in its entirety. So if you just tuned in and uh, you're saying, oh, I missed it, I missed it, we're going to give you another chance this week, and we'll send out uh, notices to all the music news groups. So um, let's see. We're going to go out with... Uh, Something which may turn into a video. Shake it Shake down. Shake it down, right. That's Shake the video they're going to drop in Paris, hopefully in May. What was happening uh, on on this record with uh, D. Levance? I'm sorry? What was happening in, in the studio with D. Levance on this one? Actually, I think that probably was the the best fun we had when we did Shake It Down. Because mm -hmm. it couldn't stop dancing. <laughs> right. So um, it was a tribute, actually, to Roger Troutman. And... Um, we just had a really good time doing that song. Yeah, Roger yeah. Troutman will—he'll uh, never die his memory and his music. So that's that's real nice. He added that touch. With Roger? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Roger. They didn't come any better than Roger Troutman. Right. Very, very, very funky, very funky artist. And he's another soldier that I miss greatly. His music will be missed greatly, and hopefully, he can carry on with his tradition for mm -hmm. his sound. We should uh, also uh, let them there know that they can go to www.dawnsilva.com and you can find out all the information to buy this CD. Um, you don't even have to leave your house these days. You know, just punch in the info and right. uh, be delivered right to your home and uh, you'll, you'll just uh, get this great funk, the real funk, Dawn Silva, all my funky friends. Okay. And Joe, I also wanted to do a shout out for um, Junie Morrison. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I, I spoke with, I've been in contact with Junie as well. And I want to thank him, too, because there's a lot of flavoring on this CD. That is Juni Morrison, because he started it. He started all of it. And I want to thank Juni Morrison, too, as well. Juni Morrison. A lot of people Junie love, Morrison, love yes. that guy. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Don. Thank you, Joe. And this is called Shake It Down right here on The Upper Room with Joe.